Now I'm turning on the audio. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Craig Klein. Appreciate y'all joining us. Um, Want to quickly introduce you to our team here. Um, I'm the CEO of Sales Nexus, and my background is as a sales executive, hiring and training salespeople and developing lead generation and business development campaigns for small and medium-sized business. I'm joined by Michael Halper, CEO of Launchpad Solutions. Hi, Michael. Hey, Greg. Michael's also the author of The Cold Calling Equation, uh, and he spent 20 years as a frontline sales, marketing, and customer service leader. Um, and Michael's going to be um, contributing uh, a little bit of the content here today. And we're joined also by Forrest Cassidy, CEO of LeadFerret.com. Welcome, Forrest. Thanks, Craig. Thanks for having us here today. Sure. And thanks for your help um, spreading the word about the webinar. Why don't you, Forrest, go ahead and give everybody a quick um, summary of what LeadFerret's all about. Uh, gladly, Craig. I know there are probably a lot of uh, existing LeadFerret users on the call, so I'll try to be too quick and not bore them too much. But basically, the concept behind LeadFerret is real simple. Um, we put uh, 10 million plus and growing daily business-to-business uh, -business records online with complete information, totally free. So it's sort of like um, yellow pages on steroids. Um, every record includes an email address. And essentially, we're trying to build really the ultimate prospecting resource for, where people can find very specific prospects using a robust set of search tools and get complete information for those prospects. And it's all free. You only ever pay if you want to actually download the data. And um, actually, with our partnership with SalesNexus, you uh, can even transfer 500 records a month for free into your SalesNexus account. Right. And to a large extent, that that um, incredibly sort of game-changing offering that Lead Ferret has put together is why we're here today, because it's really, in many ways, enabled a new way to prospect. And that's, that's what we want to talk about today. So uh, before we jump into it, I want to be sure everybody's aware, this is the first of what we're calling our 2013 Sales Growth Webinar Series. So you can see here the schedule and the lineup. Next week we'll be focusing on um, what's in it for me, identifying your customer's pain, building a successful sales and marketing process around identifying your customer's pain. So be sure and register for that. Um, then on the 30th of January, how to qualify sales leads and focus on sales growth that's profitable. So um, really focusing focusing in on qualifying prospects. And both next week and uh, the, on the 30th, uh, Michael will be uh, really our featured speaker and be giving us uh, some really in-depth content on those subjects. Then on the 6th, uh, manage a sales process of actions that lead to sales growth. So this is a lot about measuring and managing your sales pipeline. Um, and then finally on the 13th, 360-degree view of the customer relationship for business growth. So how does putting everything in one place so that everybody on your team can share it and see everything about a customer in one place, uh, how does that change the dynamics of your business? How does it help you grow? So be sure and get registered for these webinars. Um, I would suggest you go ahead and register for them, even if you're not sure you're going to be able to attend You know, two or three weeks out. Um, everyone that registers will get an email with a link to uh, a recording of the webinar and the slides, and that will be true of today's webinar as well. So you'll be getting an email tomorrow with links to take a look at the recording and so on. Okay, so today's topic is using email marketing to drive sales, specifically content-based email marketing. Uh, so we all know that Everybody needs more leads. All salespeople always want more leads. Um, sometimes we have trouble identifying good prospects, you know, in other words, focusing in on the right 
people to invest our time and money in. Um, and we all know that it's very costly and difficult to really connect with prospects. Uh, cold calling, knocking on doors, trade shows, all of it's very time consuming and costly. Um, so email marketing represents what appears to be a very cost effective alternative. However, it's kind of a minefield if you've never done it before, right? Um, there's a lot of questions and um, many in the sales world are relatively uh, unfamiliar with all of these things like how to build lists, um, what and when to send emails, um, and how to get meaningful, meaningful results out of those emails, meaning how to generate real quality sales leads. Um, so what we find, Sales Nexus being in the business of providing a CRM and email marketing solution, is that many sales leaders want to take advantage of this technology, but there's so many unknowns that they kind of get stuck and have trouble making that first step or two forward. And that's what today's all about. So if this doesn't describe you, this webinar may not be for you. Um, be sure and join us for another webinar um, in the coming weeks. But if this does describe some of the challenges that you're facing, I think you're going to like what you see here today. So. The magic five of effective content marketing campaigns. Like I said, we find that a lot of our customers have trouble taking those first couple of steps, creating those first couple of emails. Um, so what we've come up with is a really simple system to let you create an effective content marketing campaign without being a genius copywriter, you know, uh, or without needing to hire a marketing consultant to do all this for you. And what, this, what we mean by the magic five is we're going to develop five pain points that your product or service addresses for your customers. Um, and we're going to build a content marketing campaign around those pain points. Then we're going to create five qualifying questions so that when people respond to that content marketing, we can thoroughly qualify them and know when it's appropriate to invest sales time in a prospect. And then finally, when someone's been qualified, we want a campaign of emails that's going to answer all of those frequently asked questions um, that potential buyers always ask. So <clears throat> today we're going to we're going to cover how to define your target market, how to define your customers' pains, creating that content how to develop the qualifying questions, and how to develop those FAQ emails. So an email in B2B sales is really not generally expected to generate a sale. An email is expected to generate interest, engagement, a conversation, or a lead. So if, um, well, what, the point here is that if you have salespeople involved in the buying cycle, then you shouldn't expect your emails to generate orders. You should expect your emails to generate conversations with salespeople. And that's where content marketing comes in. There's also another really important point here, and one of the things that typically makes people pretty cautious about starting with email marketing. You do not want to be perceived as a spammer, right? You, in fact, your customer list or even your prospect list, especially in a typical B2B sales organization where you've invested a lot of time and money at trade shows and other prospecting activities to generate your list. And that list is your lifeblood. So, you want to create emails that are going to build your brand with that list. You do not want to send them emails that are going to annoy those prospects and customers. You want your prospects to look forward to your emails and share them with their colleagues, right? So today you're going to learn how to send effective emails that aren't spam. And that's what we call content marketing. 
So creating engaging content that your audience finds helpful, informative, and entertaining. So how do I start with that, right? Well, most busy business owners and sales executives have great expectations and great intentions, and they find it difficult to write those compelling articles. Um, and they end up with very salesy sounding emails. Um, even if your objective as when you at the outset is to create content based emails, because you're naturally going to write from the perspective of your company and your products and services, it can often come off as sounding kind of salesy. And that's what we want to avoid. What we're doing is practicing the, you know, the um, the give to get principle. We're going to give your prospects something valuable, intrinsically valuable, something that they can use without ever interacting with your company again. Um, and that builds your brand. It builds um, their engagement with your company. And that's the Magic 5 system. Five educational content pieces that you email to target contacts then five qualifying questions that set the bar for sales engagement, and then five FAQ emails that answer the questions that all those buyers are going to ask, those qualified prospects. So here's what it looks like. You have these five emails that are based on each pain point that your product or service addresses. So this is an automated campaign that you'll schedule and you might send these emails every couple of days or it might be every couple of weeks or a couple of months. That depends on the market that you're targeting. Um, and then when people interact with these emails, that tells you they may have some interest, right, in your product or service. And that's when you're, you get a salesperson on the phone with them and you qualify them using those qualifying questions. And then those people that are qualified then go on a different campaign, an automated email campaign that's designed to address each of those frequently asked questions. A really important point here is you don't want to start investing a lot of sales time in anything other than this qualification process until they've been qualified. Don't be tricked into thinking that just because somebody read one of your articles, they're worth jumping in a plane and going to do a demo or presentation, right? Um, that's why it's so important to do the qualification. So a couple of points here on the, the content-based emails based on the pains. You may want to wait and only talk to the, the folks that interact with all five of your emails. In other words, these are super qualified people, right? Or not qualified, I shouldn't use that word. Um, super likely to be qualified uh, people. And then you're going to get on the phone and qualify them via a salesperson. And they've got to really pass that bar before you start investing a lot of time in them. Um, but other people may say, well, you know what, if they're interested in any one of these pieces, then I want to talk to them. Okay, that's up to you. Or it could be some combination thereof. And then, just so you can see the mechanics of how this is going to work, you have these, this automated email campaign going out. And in a, your email marketing tool, whether that be SalesNexus or some other tool, um, you can go and see who's opening and clicking on your emails, right? And then you can drill down to a specific campaign and say, you know what, show me the list of people that clicked on the emails in those campaigns. I'm going to now put my salespeople on top of those guys, have them call all the people that clicked on the emails. Okay, so now we're going to get a little more into the nuts and bolts now that we've kind of given you an overview on the 
the concept. Before we do that, let me real quickly point out, if you have questions, you can ask them by typing in your questions in the GoToWebinar panel, the little control panel that came up when you logged on. You'll see where it says questions. Type them in there. We'll be keeping an eye out for them, and uh, we'll try to respond to them as we go through the presentation today. Um, okay, so targeting your market. That's the number one factor for success here. Uh, you want to be as specific as possible. Right? You really want to know who is your ideal prospect. And um, with a tool like leadferret.com, you can come in here and do some very specific searches. You see here you can search by their title level, you know, are they C level, VP level, director level, etc. You can put in a very specific title. Um, and um, I'm sorry, we're here we're getting a little background knocking there. I'm not sure, Michael, if that's coming from your end there. Um, Anyway, um, so you can see with Lead Fair, you can put in your title, you can search by revenue, you can search by number of employees, um, SIC code, you know, industry, um, their location. There's even a really cool map search feature in Lead Ferret, uh that's uh, really handy if you want to target, target a specific geographic area. Um, and as Forrest pointed out earlier, people that our subscribers to Sales Nexus can download 500 of these contacts into Sales Nexus each month at no additional charge. Um, so it's a tremendous resource. Resource, and these um, emails have, uh, or I'm sorry, these contacts have email addresses uh, with the contact record. Uh, I, I see some people, several people actually um, asking about, you know, kind of, uh, can that be true <laughs> questions here in, in GoToWebinar. And uh, Forrest, you want to respond to that? Yeah, it's um, not only true. I mean, you can definitely get on the website and check it out for yourself. But you can not only uh, get email addresses, titles, phone numbers, physical addresses, uh, SIC information, industry information, company size information, but we even have some really neat additional fields that we provide. And again, it, it is all free. You only pay if you want to download the data to spreadsheet, but if you want to use it on the site, it's all free. Um, but we do also have fields like links to that person's Facebook profile, Twitter profile, um, LinkedIn profile. Um, for a limited number of records, we even have identified things like what type of device they use. Do they use an iPad, an iPhone, Android device, mobile device to access websites and their emails? So, yeah, our objective is really, again, just to provide the best possible information, all completely free, best quality, and uh, breadth of data that we provide. So, if you haven't taken, a, if you're on this webinar and you haven't taken a look at LeadFerret, I just want to. It, you know, you definitely should. Um, seeing is believing, and again, it's all totally free to view on the website and search. Yeah, it's it's free to set up your account, free to search, uh, and again, if you're a Sales Nexus subscriber, you can download 500 contacts every month. Um, in fact, a quick example: I was meeting with a client yesterday, and they target hospitals. Uh, they sell. Uh, basically whiteboards that go in patient rooms. And uh, she says, my ideal prospect is somebody with the title chief nursing officer. And she says, that is a really tough list of people to get to. Um, so I just typed it in, and Lead Ferret comes back, and there's 15,000 contacts in North America for her to, call, to email. Uh, so she got pretty excited. It's a great resource. I encourage everybody to try it out. Um, okay, so step two is um, to find those pains that we're going to base our campaign on. Um, so um, 
Michael, you want to uh, sort of take over here and address that? Sure, sure thing. And uh, the bank, they're doing construction in the office next to me, so pretty bad timing on that, but uh, <laughs> it like stopped just now. So uh, sure, yeah. And before I jump to pain, I, I just want to kind of uh, pick, pick up on what you were describing, Craig, because um, we actually use sort of a variation of this, this concept in my business. Uh, one of our businesses is uh, appointment setting. So we, we, we set appointments for other businesses through the by through using telesales resources, and um, a, a few months ago we were getting contact lists from databases like Uber's, and we would get contact names and titles, and we would take that and make phone calls, and then as a second step we would send emails, uh, and the emails would then have information on pain, and 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 it was sort of a a version of this, but it started with the phone call, and what we and we, we use Sales Nexus and we started using Lead Ferret a few months ago and with the addition of those email addresses, we then were able to shift to sending emails first and then making our calls based on the clicks on the emails. So we've just drastically improved our efficiency and our effectiveness because we've gone from making blind, I'll not even say cold calls, but almost blind calls to now making calls where we know that there's at least some level of interest because we're calling people that click links inside of our email. So, so uh, just sort of a testament there to this model. And I think that um, it's really that, that having those emails with the, the click notification, because that's sort of a self-qualifying that your, your prospect is doing. They're somewhat raising their hand a little bit that says, I'm kind of interested in what you've emailed me. And so that's great information. And that's really, I think, the power of this program. That being said, um, we need to find out what those pains are for our ideal prospect in order to find the people to raise their hand. And that's what we're, we'll talk about now, which is, um, uh, and you can go ahead and flip on, click, click on to the next slide, Craig. Oh, you know what? I, I'm sorry. I kind of got you out of order here, Michael. But the, I had put in this uh, example from one of our campaigns. So obviously somebody that cares about pipeline management is a good prospect for sales nexus, right? So this is our email. And I see a lot of people asking about subject lines and things like that. So let me just um, uh, make sure and address a couple of those questions through this example. Um, so this would be our subject right here. Whoops, sorry. Uh, five ways pipeline management grows the bottom line. So if you open that email, that tells me a little bit of something about your level of interest, right? But you can see here the email, and, you know, it just kind of talks about uh, those pains a little more, kind of bringing up the, the, the making them hurt is what I like to say, right? Is next quarter in the bag? Is it tough to know what to expect this month? Um, so if they then click this link and go to read that article, that tells me I want to talk to that person, right? Um, and to address a couple of the other questions, that in Sales Nexus, and this is not, you can do this with other tools. I, I want everybody to be real clear on that. Um, the system will tell you who's clicked on your the link in your email. Um, so you can pick up the phone and call them. Literally the next day, get on the phone and start calling the people that clicked your emails yesterday, right? So this is just one example. Um, you know, the Michael and I were talking about this earlier today. The pain has a lot of different levels, right? Um, and um, Michael, I kind of let you take over here. I would just say that, from my perspective, even though you might be selling a very technical product, you want to try and communicate at the emotional level, you know, those things that really keep people up at night. Yeah, so, and, and I'll just pick up there. Um, the, the, a lot of the content that we've developed, and, um, and there's more of this in, in my book, The Cool Calling Equation, and we have full uh, training programs developed around this, and there'll be a module specifically next week on pain, but it's all structured around three levels of pain. And at the lowest level, uh, if you can go ahead and click on to the next slide, Greg. Yep. And it's 
it's animated, so I'll have to tell you when to click, I guess. But um, at the lowest level, you have technical pain. And let's not let this get confused with IT or technical products. This just means at the lowest level, the initial pain that's felt, and it is sometimes felt in technical areas, but it, it, the, the typical areas that this pain is felt is in the processes that your clients uh, are using, maybe in their systems, maybe in their people. Um, you know, onboarding an employee, if it takes a tremendous amount of time, um, that, doesn't, that doesn't involve any technology. It's a, it's a process and involves a person and training, but that, uh, that, that cumbersome process is, is painful, and that's the technical pain. Uh, you could almost just think of it as the, the lowest level. And so some examples are slow, broken manual processes, poor system, or even just employee performance, lack of reliability. So we all have these pains at the lowest level, and go ahead, click uh, once or a couple times, or once or twice. Yeah, there you go. These pains, when they're experienced by your prospects or your clients, those will trickle up or work their way up to impact your prospects at a business level. Um, one thing that we can often do is we can often get stuck and only focus on the technical pain. Um, sometimes because those are most obvious. Uh, but those, if you, if you are cognizant that those will impact in a larger way, they, those technical pains, for example, when it takes us a long time to onboard that employee, that impacts us from a cost standpoint. It, it takes a lot more time and resources to train that employee. As well, since it takes, if that's a salesperson that we're onboarding, it takes them longer before they can be out in the field and generating revenue. So that hits us in the area of revenue. So these technical pains impact us in the business area, and those cause business pains. And those can be felt in areas like low revenue, low market share, close rate, maybe high cost. And that there's lots of different areas where costs can be felt, but maybe high cost of goods sold, high labor cost, high operational uh, cost. Uh, poor delivery of services. If you're uh, delivering a, a web-based solution and you have a, a technical pain of poor system performance, that's going to impact the delivery of that web-based service, and that's your business pain. So, but it doesn't stop there, and you can click a couple times, Craig. Those pains will go continue to work their way up, and these are the probably the pains that we forget most often. Is that the if you. you these impact your prospect at a personal level. So let's say you do sell a, an IT product, and that product is, and your ideal prospect is maybe a director of IT. Well, when their their organization is feeling these technical and these business pains, what does that mean to that individual? Well, that might mean that their their income could be negatively impacted. If there are a lot, if there's a significant amount of pains, that might impact their annual bonus or their compensation. Uh, it could impact their career. If there is a, an, a system outage, that might eliminate the opportunity for them to be promoted, or could it cause uh, somebody to be fired? Um, so those are the, the personal pains, uh, and, and to be honest with you, those are really what, uh, what drive uh, a lot of decisions that people make, because we're, at some level, we're all somewhat self-serving. Anyways, I don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there, because I could talk for an hour on this subject. Uh, Craig, if you could click once. We're going to pick up on this subject next week, and we'll have a full hour dedicated to that subject alone. We'll go into all of those three levels. We'll, we'll talk about what pain is. We'll talk about those three levels of pain. We'll also talk about six pain symptoms for you to look for. We'll talk about some tactics to uncover pain. Uh, and one thing that we'll actually show you next week is a tool that we've developed called Sales Scripter. Uh, there's actually a beta version of this available if you want to check this out after this session ends. You could actually go to this website, salescripter.com. You can actually sign up at no cost and try, try it as a trial. But it's basically a web-based tool that will ask you some questions about the products you sell. And the second stage in the sales scripter is all about pain. And so if you follow along with the tool, uh, it'll actually help you to uncover the pains that are resolved by the products and services that you sell. Um, so check it out. We'll talk more about it next week. It is a beta version. So please be uh, generous as you uh, go through it. But uh, I'll leave it there and, and throw it back to you, Craig. Sure, yeah. And so just to remind everybody, next week Michael's going to be doing the deep dive on pain. So 
if you really want to get into that, uh, be sure and join us next week. And I highly encourage everybody to check out the sales scripter. This is a really neat system that Michael's developed that um, you, if, if you need qualifying questions, the scripter will produce them for you. Uh, if you need to know your pains of your customers, the scripter will produce it for you. Uh, so be sure and check that out. i got to apologize to everybody for all the banging. This is getting crazy. Um, Michael, I may end up muting you to see if that helps reduce it, uh, but I guess they're building a new office over there next door or something. Um, anyway, um, so... So this is how it's all supposed to work. Once you've got those pains identified, those things that your product addresses for your customer, and like Michael said, the more emotional, the better. That's ultimately, there's a lot of research on this. That's why we buy things, for emotional reasons. The, all the, the business and technical things are justifications for our emotional reasons for buying things. Um, so that's why you want to get to that level if you can. Um, so if you're pain is working late to handle billing new clients, then the headline and the subject of your email might be three ways inefficient bookkeeping kills profits of new businesses. Um, subject line examples might be uh, working late again to build new clients or you choose build new clients or spend time with the family, um, you know, things like that. So those are just some examples. Um, so then you're going to create these five different emails. And pane one, it will be subject one. And pane two is subject two, two and so on and so forth, right? Um, so there's some pretty simple ways to do this, you know. Um, and you'll see a lot of this from Sales Nexus. And you'll see a lot of it from a lot of people that do a lot of content marketing, you know. Four, four ways to avoid pain number one or five steps to fix pain number two. You know, people like step-by-step, step uh, you know, how-to guide kind of stuff, um, so that's a good subject line. Or how XYZ Corp fixed pain number three. Uh, obviously, you're going to replace pain number three with the actual pain. Um, but uh, once you've identified these pains, it all starts to fall into a system and it starts to get pretty easy and that's why we've created this this system um, so here's an example uh, this is a client uh, you're gonna see several examples from us here uh, that are sales nexus related and that's because we're happy to show you what we do in fact probably many of you have already seen it um, but we want to protect the confidentiality of anything that we're uh, working with our clients on and and in a couple of cases here, we've been able to get their permission to share some of this. Um, and so that's what this is. Um, the, uh, you know, uh, this is a company that does CFO coaching and consulting. So with 2013 fast approaching, many of you may be focused on planning for the upcoming year. Which planning tool are you using, a budget or a forecast? What's the difference between the two? Should you use both? Click here for more thoughts. Pretty simple, right? But I tell you what, if somebody clicks that link, my friends at the strategic CFO want to talk to that person, right? And so that's how these emails are supposed to work. Here's another one, kind of on a, in a different direction, but very effective. Uh, this is a company that does um, cruises out on uh, Clear Lake and Galveston Bay here in Houston. And... Um, they, uh, um, you know, they do weddings and parties and things like that, but they also have more of a public, just kind of a date night kind of thing, right? So subject line is, does someone deserve a date night? Um, and then it's just a straight up, you know, hey, you might be interested in, in this package. Um, so if you click that link to take a look at that um, article, uh, or in this case, it's actually a little video about the, uh, the boat itself, you know, you see it out there on the water and everybody having a good time, then they want to talk to you, you know. Uh, so pretty simple. Then step three is sit down and create your content. So um, 
it's it doesn't have to be hard if you've created those if you've identified those pains now you know what to write right you need an article about each of those pains all you got to do is schedule some time to work on it believe it or not no matter how sort of uh non uh um experienced you are with this kind of thing um you know how to talk about this stuff you talk about it with customers all the time um you may not be real comfortable with the concept of writing it, but once you get started, I think you'll find it comes together pretty quickly. Uh, put some time on your calendar, whether it's during the day, in the evening, on a weekend. Block out some time and create your first piece, and I think you'll find it goes a lot easier than you, than you think it might. Um, also, you don't have to write everything yourself. Uh, it could be articles on other sites, you know. Um, it's completely fine in most cases. Obviously, some sites uh, have copyrights and things, and they'll, of course, make that clear to you. But most sites, especially blogs and, and sort of trade uh, industry-specific um, sites, are happy for you to, um, you know, mention their content. So uh, that's fine. You know, you see an article that you think your prospects would be interested in that really addresses one of those pains, send them a link to that article. Or do a quick video interview with a customer, you know, a customer that's just taken advantage of your service. You know, what was their, what was it like when they were in pain before they had you? And now what's it like? That's a great, quick, easy video. Put it on YouTube and send a link. Um, customer stories, you know, case studies, testimonials. Don't let this happen to you. That kind of horror story type of thing is also a good one. Um, comparisons of options and competitors, you know, so um, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of us with, you know, the three biggest industry uh, providers or something like that. Uh, and book recommendations is another good idea that can be easy um, and not require you to become a, a full-blown author. Um, so just a few ideas, but one way or the other, you've got to sit down and create the content. Um, something that your prospects are going to value in and of itself. So once you have your content pieces, then you need an email that you send out, like we looked at earlier, um, that points people to that content. Um, your email should sell the content, not your solution, not your company, not your product. Okay, that's the part that a lot of people have trouble with. Um, you don't want to talk about your company, your solution, your product. You want this to be intrinsically valuable. You're giving something to the prospect that doesn't have anything with, to do with you getting anything out of it. That's what creates the bond. Okay. So in your email, talk about the content itself. Make them want to read it. Make them hurt. Make them feel the pain that they are in if they need your product or service, right? Remind them how, what it feels like to have that problem that your product fixes. Um, you know, how did this happen to you or has this happened to you? Um, is pain for costing you money or time or jobs or customers? Um, then make them click to read the content. Some people will include a little teaser amount of the content, like the first paragraph or something like that, or maybe an excerpted sort of power quote from the content in the email. But ultimately, you need them to click to go read something or watch a video or something like that, because that's how you know they wanted to read it. So here's another example uh, from Sales Nexus. You know, uh, five reasons your CRM isn't working. So for me, that's a powerful subject line, right? If your CRM is not working and you want to know five, you can't figure out why not, I can help you. And so if you read this article and, and decide, uh, or I'm sorry, read this email and then decide to read the article, then that makes you uh, a pretty good prospect for SalesNexus, right? Um, so here's another example from our world. We have uh, you know a few eBooks that we've done and this is an example, seven easy ways sales teams win with email marketing. So again, 
If you want to know about how sales teams can win with email marketing, then I probably want to talk to you, right? Um, if you just want to know about email marketing, but the but the sales team part doesn't really matter to you, then I may not want to talk to you. And that's kind of the subtlety that you'll you'll learn to to get to um, in your subject lines and your article titles and things like that. Uh, here's another example: seven hidden costs of CRM. If you're using a CRM and you feel kind of like you got the bait and switch or you got burned, it costs a lot more than you thought it was going to. That kind of thing. Then again, I want to talk to you. Um, so this one in particular, you can see how simple it is. There's very little text here. There's no no images and graphics, nothing fancy. Um, you know, just a little bit of you know hitting on the pain, and here's the link to read the article. This is one of our most effective uh, emails and articles. Okay, so step four is creating those qualifying questions. So the people that read one of those articles, now you want to get on the phone with them and qualify them and see if they're really likely to buy in the near term, right? So um, here I'll turn it back to you, Michael. Yep. So uh, the qualifying questions, we okay, at this point in the process, we we see who's clicking on our emails, and now we want to make some calls out to those people who are raising their hand. And instead of calling them to set, try to sell your product, we're going to call them with the five, quali five qualifying questions. And we, uh, we're, by the way, in two weeks, we'll have a module that's strictly on qualifying and how to qualify and how to develop good qualifying questions. Um, we kind of use a two-step qualifying process. Uh, step one is to softly qualify. And the goal of softly qualifying is identifying if it even makes sense for us to talk. Meaning, is there anywhere close to there being a need? And is there anywhere, is the person that you're talking to the right person for you to speak with? Um, so what you, what you ideally want to do is develop those five questions to kind of identify that. Does it make sense for us to, in other words, after the call, is it going to make sense for me to come out and meet with you for 20 to 30 minutes? So as you can see here from the slide, the goals are to gather some information. Of course, the questions will do that. We want to determine if there's any level of a need. We want to identify if the person is the right person to talk to. You know, maybe they're not at the right level in the organization. So it could possibly be that you reach somebody and they do have good information, but they're at an extremely low level of the organization and you don't want to drive out and schedule a meeting at that level. You can get something out of that call and maybe make another call at to a higher level, but you just want to identify what level that person's at and like I said, does it make sense to me? So here's some examples of some qualifying questions that would be ideal. You know, uh, how do you feel about your current the, your current level of leads that you are producing? You know, uh, what? And I, I actually developed these questions last night, thinking of Sales Nexus in mind, just trying to think of an example. Uh, and Craig, I don't know if these are the perfect questions for your business or not, but uh, what systems are you currently using to automate and track your your email marketing? You know, you ask a question like that, and you'll find out what they're currently using. Maybe the answer tells you, oh, you know, they, you know, they're they're not the right fit. It doesn't make sense for us to talk. So here are some others. I won't read through them verbatim. You can see them right there. Um, and there's there's harsher questions that you want to ask to qualify, and we'll go over the harder ones, the harder qualifying questions uh, in two weeks. But these are some types of questions that you could ask in that follow-up phone call. Craig? Yeah, um, that's good. Uh, those are great questions, pretty close to the ones that, that we use now. Um, um, so uh, another reminder, Michael's going to be digging into pain next Wednesday, um, and then the following Wednesday, which would be the 30th, he'll be digging into qualifying questions. Um, so be sure and register for those webinars. You're going to get an email as a follow-up to today's webinar with links to register for those. Um, and then also, the qualifying questions are another um, output that comes out of uh, using the sales script or site that Michael was talking about earlier. So check that out. Um, so, um, you know, what I really like about this whole approach 
it, especially being a, a sales guy for a long time, you know, uh, it's been uh, years, but, you know, I used to spend some uh, quality time on the phone doing good old-fashioned cold calling, right? And we all know what that's like. Um, it's not always fun. It's not always all that profitable if you're if you're not doing it right, right? But what's most uncomfortable about it is that in getting that initial engagement, um, you know, making that initial uh, connection. And with this approach, this is a much more uh, soft or uh, conversational call because you're calling and saying, hey, I hope you enjoyed, and then you state the article that they read, right? Um, you know, I'm not sure if we're a good fit for you, but I wanted to ask you a few questions. Um, and you get right to those questions. Um, if they at all enjoyed your article, they're going to be happy to talk to you for a couple of minutes. Uh, and obviously it might have been written by someone else, the CEO or something like that. They're being called by a salesperson, but that's okay. Um, you're going to be able to gather this valuable information, um, and your goal in that call should be very specific. You need to decide what that is, but you want to know what it is going in. Uh, do you want to register them for some kind of event? Do you want to ask for an appointment, kind of like Michael was talking about, if they're qualified? Do you want to ask for an order? That, In some cases, that may be appropriate, um, or something else. Uh, are you going to ask them for permission to send them something more in depth? You know, uh, but define what that is, and then be sure and track the answers. Now, in Sales Nexus, you can do things like create little drop downs to keep track of the answers to the questions. Like, like Michael was pointing out, you know, we want to know what systems you're currently using and how many users you have and things like that. In your business, it'll be a different set of questions. But they can be drop downs that the salespeople can just point and click and enter the answers, and that way you can use this at a marketing and an and, and analysis level uh, in the future. Um, if you don't have a CRM, that doesn't mean you can't do this. Use an Excel file. But what you definitely want to be able to do is go back at the end of a few months of doing this and say, you know what, the people that clicked on this particular article always turn out like this. You know, here's the trends we see there. And here's how many sales we made from that. Um, and let's look at each of these different articles in that way. Let's look at the whole campaign that way. And then let's go back and tweak and adjust. Uh, so definitely want to track this data. Um, all right. So the, the last piece in the process here is the FAQ questions. Um, this should be the, the easiest part for you. Um, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it today um, because generally it, it, it's very unique to your business and you know what those things are, right? Um, you know, the things that every customer ends up asking you before they actually write you a check, sign the order, or give you the credit card. Um, you know, it might be, you know, how do you compare with and then, you know, insert the industry leader there, right? Uh, or might be things about the setup process, you know, how long does it take, um, how much does it cost, things like that. Might have to do with delivery time, how, how soon can it get here, um, you know, how many, how difficult is the process of using your uh, service or product, um, what's the difficulty of setup or installation, what are customer service options? What's your refund policy? Uh, those kind of things. And other more specific things to your world. But um, write them down. Ask your salespeople what these things are, right? They know. And then create an email. So the question is the subject, and the answer is the body of the email. Pretty simple. Um, and what these emails do is they start going out to the qualified prospects, the ones that your salesperson talked to, they answered all the qu qualifying questions the right way, and now we're pursuing them as a prospect via the salesperson, right? These emails start going out, and they're educating the prospect, and it facilitates the sales process. Um, it helps them move towards the close, because we all know that salespeople aren't perfect. Sometimes they forget to answer some of these questions right? Um, and that can then delay 
the order unexpectedly towards the end of the process. Um, so this just kind of greases the skids. Um, so another example from our world, you know, here's uh, uh, a little screenshot from an FAQ page on our site, right? So here are the most frequently asked questions that we get from people that are genuinely interested in purchasing SalesNexus, right? Um, you know, how does SalesNexus compare to other popular brands? Uh, how many emails can I send out? That's a good one. Um, can I create autoresponders and things like that? Um, tell me about your delivery rate, uh, et cetera. You know what the questions are in your world. Um, writing these emails should be really, like we talked about, the, kind of the easy part of this overall process. Okay, so these are the five steps again. Define your target. Uh, jump into Lead Ferret and see what they have um, that fits that target. Um, define your customer's pains. You can check out salescripter.com if you want a little help with that. And you can join us for our webinar next Wednesday um, for Michael's in-depth training on identifying customer pain. Then create your content. Just block off some time to write it yourself or leverage other people's content, books, articles, uh, things like that. Developing, develop your qualifying questions and develop your FAQ emails. So by doing this, you're going to send out this automated campaign of your five content-based pain pieces to a wider audience than your sales team can currently reach, whether it's cold calling or other techniques that you're using. You load in a list of emails and start sending out these emails automatically, and it's very low labor cost, right? And you're building your brand with these people because these are not salesy emails. Um, and you identify interested leads. So the people that click on the link, that becomes an interested lead. They drop down here, and your salesperson gets on the phone and asks them the qualifying questions. Whoops. Um, it's a an e much easier way to connect with difficult accounts. You know, if, if you have a lot of trouble just getting that first conversation, uh, this can be a great solution. Um, and what it really lets you do is focus your sales time on highly qualified prospects rather than in most businesses you're spending most of your sales time just trying to get connected with anybody that generally fits the profile. Here, your salespeople are easily connected with people that have already told you by clicking on an article that they're at least mildly interested. You're going to build lasting relationships because you're sending them things that they value. Uh, it builds your brand as an expert, as a trusted resource. And you're going to end up with a higher close rate. That's the bottom line. Um, and that's we see that over and over and over again. Okay, so um, I want to uh, be sure and talk about what comes next here and um, also want to address some of the questions that have come in. Um, there's, there's a lot of questions about how do I do this in a system like SalesNexus, you know, sort of technically how does it work. And um, I don't want to get into any kind of sales pitch about SalesNexus or training or anything like that. But what you should know is that three times a week we offer live training sessions. So you're welcome to join those uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can join our live training sessions. Uh, as I said, it's live, so you can ask questions. Um, and in particular, Wednesday is where we get into email marketing. So we're going to talk about creating campaigns, creating your email templates, and um, um, you know, measuring the results, tracking the clicks, um, scheduling the follow-up calls, all of that. Um, so join us for that. And um, there's uh, several people here, Michael, that are um, asking us about, um, you know, those qualifying questions and, and how to know when a prospect's qualified. So um, you, you want to 
add anything to your earlier comments there? Well, those are great questions, and I can definitely answer those exactly. I can explain that exactly um, systematically, and we'll go into that in detail in two weeks. Uh, but basically, uh, there are a few different, uh, just real quick, there are four different areas where you want to basically assess a prospect. Are, do they have interest? Do they have need? Do they have the authority to purchase? Meaning, are they the do they ha, are, are they a decision maker or are they more of an influencer? Uh, and do they have the ability to purchase? So to go through those again: interest, need, authority, and ability. Ability to purchase means money, right? So if they have all four of those, if they're medium to strong in all four of those areas, then you can say this is a qualified prospect. If they're weak in just one area, then they are a questionable prospect, meaning they could be incredibly interested. They could be the decision maker. They could have tremendous needs. But if they don't have money, they're not a, they're not a qualified prospect. So if you think about those four areas, take one out and you have a problem. Uh, we will go through that in detail. We will, talk, we will show you questions that you can ask in each of those four areas in two weeks. Um, would love to go into more detail, but I don't think we have time. Yeah, so so to, uh, I'm sorry, next Wednesday, the 23rd at 4 p.m. Eastern, Michael's going to go into um, what's in it for me, building a successful marketing and sales process by identifying customers' pain. Then the following Wednesday, the 30th, at the same time, 4 p.m. Eastern, he's going to go into uh, developing those qualifying questions. Um, so be sure and register for those webinars. You can go right here to salesnexus.com slash resources slash webinars to register. And you're going to get an email later. Uh, that will be tomorrow. You'll get an email that's going to have a link to register for these webinars as well as a link to today's webinar recorded and the slides and a few other things. Um, now, I want to make everybody aware about a special offer. We're really excited about this process, and we just really want to see as many businesses as possible give it a try. Um, and in order to encourage you to do that, we're making a special offer to only people that have attended today's webinar. So by being here today, you are eligible for the, this offer. Um, if you subscribe to Sales Nexus before Monday, the 23rd, uh, I'm sorry, I, I put in the wrong date there. It's Monday, the 21st. Um, you, are, you will receive a free two-hour email campaign consultation. So we're going to talk about how we identify the right email list for you to send to. We're going to review your current content if you have any. We're going to brainstorm and strategize on new content that you may want to develop. And we're going to review your current campaigns if you're already doing some uh, and or talk about you know, the structure of a, of a future campaign. So that's a free two-hour email campaign consultation with, um, with Sales Nexus to anyone who subscribes to Sales Nexus before this Monday, the 21st. So hope you take advantage of that. Um, also want to make everybody aware that we have, uh, you know, sort of a more advanced program that we offer. One of the big differences with Sales Nexus is we, we're going to get involved and help you make all this technology work for your business. And so this is just one example. We offer a one-piece content campaign uh, program or project. Um, it starts with a salescripter.com profile. So we're going to help you go through the scripter and identify those pains and qualifying questions. Then we're going to consult with you on your target market and how to source that list through leadferret.com uh, or other, other sources if that's necessary, uh, and the campaign strategy. And then we're going to write a piece for you, a 600-word content piece. We're going to write that for you, and we're going to design an email and write the email and set up the campaign and train you how to use it. And the cost of that is $600. So that's a great value for anybody that's ever tried to pay somebody else to do this kind of thing for you, uh, you know that it usually costs thousands of dollars. Um, so uh, wanted to make everybody aware that that's available. We also offer more, you know, larger multi-piece campaigns as well. 
And, of course, you can start your free trial of Sales Nexus anytime. It's free for 30 days. You can upload your own list with emails and start sending out emails. You can also create your free account on leadferret.com and load in 500 lead ferret contacts with emails and start sending out emails. You can create your own templates and your own campaigns. You can send out email blasts and campaigns up to 50,000 emails per month per user and generate leads and close sales all in that first 30 days at no cost to you. So um, just to be sure everybody understands, you can do all of this that we've covered today yourself without any help from me or Sales Nexus or Michael or anybody else. You can go to Lead Ferret, start a free account, go to Sales Nexus, start a free account, and get started. If you want our help, we're here to help. Um, so be sure and reach out to us if we can help. Um, so with that, um, I want to thank Michael and Forrest for the opportunity to present this today. Thank you very much, guys. Yep, good to be here. And, uh, of course, I want to thank everybody that joined us today. Really appreciate it. And, again, you'll get an email tomorrow with links to the recording and the slides and um, the scripter and to register for the other webinars. So uh, we'll be back in touch with you soon. And if there's anything we can do to help you get off to a fast start, just let us know. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thanks again for having me as well, Craig. Yeah, thanks, Forrest. Appreciate it. Have a great day. You too.